Hey guys, Brian Beeler coming to you from the Storage View Lab. On April 21st, Crucial launched two new SSDs, the P5 designed to be a more performant drive for gamers and enthusiasts, creative pros, that type, and this guy, the P2, which is a new value-based offering from, uh, from the company. Now Crucial already had the P1 out, which came out a little while ago, and it was a uh, designed to be a cost-effective drive at the time, mostly because it used QLC NAND. QLC NAND isn't perfect. It's, uh, it makes for a decent drive, but it's got to be in an environment where there aren't a lot of write activities, or certainly not a lot of sustained writes. So the P2, which we assumed out of the gate would be an evolution of the QLC drive, is actually not. It's a TLC drive, uh, but still remains in their value line. And so what that means in terms of this drive is it's going to offer read profile up to 2300 megabytes per second, but on the writes, it's actually slower than what the P1 delivered. The P1 quoted up to 1700 megabytes per second. Uh, I believe this guy's clocking in at uh, 1150. Uh, either way though, it's still a, a drive that's going to give you all the benefits of, of flash and the affordability uh, that you don't often see in the higher end SSDs. The other thing too is because it's so cost effective, you'll see this in a lot of systems that are going to, to try to hit a price point. Now it may not be the 500 gig, you might see the 250 gig driving uh, out into those, those notebooks that are at the six, $700 price range. Uh, system builders will like something like this because at the end of the day, if you're doing email and Facebook and, and other light activities, this drive is gonna be perfectly fine for those types of things. If you're gonna be doing more intensive write activity or be gaming or using uh, photo editing apps, things along those lines, you'll be better off with the P5, at least in the Crucial family. But let's go ahead and pop this guy out and see what we're looking at. Here's our handy little box cutter because how else would we handle that little piece of tape? And it's got a nice little plastic clamshell. And pop this dude out. So it's a uh, 2280 M.2 standard form factor, single sided, so it's bare on this side. From a uh, systems design, that's important because this can go in the thin and lights, ultra thins, uh, because of the, uh, the shorter uh, height of the, uh, of the drive. So we've got the 500 gig model. Uh, like I said on their spec sheet, they're saying that that will be, uh, let's see, five year warranty, 100 terab 150 terabytes written. And on the 500 gig, we're supposed to see 2300 and uh, 940 on the read. So I, before I said 1150, that's available in the smaller capacity, uh, 250 gig drive that's got the 2100 megabytes per second read. Of course, it uh, works with their uh, storage executive software and uh, comes with true image from Acronis. So what we'll do is we'll pop this in our, uh, our various rigs, get it tested, see where the performance shakes out, and dive in a little bit more on the hardware and its capabilities. All right, so Kevin joins me in the uh, podcast studio as we consider the performance profile of the Crucial P2. Uh, as a reminder, our drive's the 500 gig model, and the way we've been thinking about this as a hard drive alternative, not really a replacement, because this will mostly go into new systems, most likely, um, and we've cropped down the number of comparables we show in the results because it gets a little complicated when you start to look at the P2 compared to other more performing performance-based SSDs. So Kevin, what are we looking at first on the comps and then let's dive into the performance? Yeah, so the co uh, comparison for this group is actually pretty tough because as you might notice, we don't have the uh, P1 on this and that's for a good, well, that's for a very specific reason. The way we test QLC devices is different than anything uh, else. Uh, we have to test QLC with a 1% partition size because QLC devices, if you test greater than that, It'll fall outside the SLC cache, and the performance will look really, really bad. So these devices are still tested at the 5% partition size. Um, same way we test everything else in the MLC, oh, TLC and MLC categories. Um, but these are at the very bottom of the uh, rankings, but also very value-centric. Right, so you're still getting flash benefits over a hard drive, and... 
Uh, I mean, that's really how these should be viewed as as hard drive replacement slash alternatives. And when yeah, we we're look- talking about drives that are. I mean, honestly, you're looking at a drive that's what two hundred twenty five thousand IOPS. I mean, it's a low performer, but you're still almost at a quarter million IOPS. Right, out of a sixty five dollar part. Yes, at at retail, and when we think about this in terms of uh, performance, the hard drive, the WD Black, their performing performance line of of notebook hard drives is like 45 bucks so it's a 20 dollar delta to go from something that is moving parts sucks power and isn't all that fast to something that gives you a quarter million read iops so yeah it's not all bad yeah and then as we turn to uh right workloads things get a little bit tough uh vd bench is gonna look dramatic when you uh, see those results but it's because we plot out, uh, we measure the full performance of the drive, and it scales between uh, 10% and 120% in 10% increments. And this is where a drive that um, doesn't have great capture performance of its uh, garbage collection is going to start getting sporadic with its latency. So you'll have performance decrease, latency bump up as you're going through that pattern instead of a nice swoop. And lack of DRAM probably has something to do with that too. Yeah, I mean, that can have a contributing factor. We've had drives that, I, th- I think we've seen some drives that don't have DRAM that perform better than this. But it's usually you're dropping DRAM not for a performance reason, but for a uh, part reduction yeah, reason. Yeah, keep the bomb cost yeah. down. The drive's a little more composed, again, on uh, the larger block reads. Look at uh, this data. Tell us what you think. Yeah, so, I mean, you're getting over um, a gig a second. I mean, you're looking at around 1.5 uh, gigabytes a second. It's not as fast as the uh, WD Blue, but it's also faster than the 880 uh, S40G. And, I mean, you're, if you had a uh, hard drive comparison in this, you'd be looking at higher latency and then maybe 120 megabytes a second, if that. So that's better, still yeah. 10x better, roughly just using some round numbers, even out of the value-centric P2. Now, when we look over at the uh, Houdini results, that's where we see a more broad comparison of SSDs. Um, I mean, I, I guess it did okay here, right? Because we... Yeah, it's... I mean, these are all... Uh, this is a benchmark that it's more um, resource-intensive, so it depends on uh, high performance at a very low Q depth. I think the uh, tra- uh, the swap file size for this uh, benchmark is uh, 120 gig, and it's rendering f- uh, frames in this uh, Houdini uh, benchmark. And it really takes a high caliber drive to do well in this benchmark. But again, a hard drive wouldn't even be on this chart. This thing would be like in the next room over. And so we've seen um, issues before where people want to save money, so they buy a less expensive part assuming that maybe just because it's flash it'll be okay you know this this drive it's hard because we're so performance oriented we sometimes pick on things like this that don't do super well but in read workloads it was pretty com- composed it didn't yeah. get too out of control and uh, it, it completed this test which is much more intensive from a, uh, from a resource standpoint and for those that have this thing in a budget thin and light or or whatever system they're building, it'll do just fine. It'll perform probably better than a lot of QLC devices when you're installing a large game or something that pushes outside that SLC cache. You're going to have fairly predictable performance and dramatically better performance than a hard drive. All right, so be happy it's not a hard drive. And if you've got one of these in a, in a new system, you're probably doing okay if you're you know in, in those budget system prices anyway that you're mostly going to be doing web browsing email like and you might not have a choice i mean the, it's if you're getting this device you're probably happy you had flash and you didn't get a, a system with a hard drive absolutely all right well there's our uh, crucial p2 500 gig ssd review thanks for tuning in and we'll be back with more videos soon